Hello world! So thank you for being with me this time for the RESTful application programming model video 3. This is the review of a SAP developers.com tutorial for getting grip into the RESTful application programming model, which is the new modeling design for developers. Finally, close this gap and create an app where we'll have the full enchilada now with the application on top of this. So now let's get our hands dirty once again to create the Fury and to consume the service. We are in our tutorial and in the second video of this series we already created the OData service with the new upper breastful programming model. What we are doing now is we bring flesh to the bones and we create a Fury in the last chapter here. And this Fury is then used to consume the web service. So I don't dive here in. So this is um, explained step by step. We do it directly. What I'm doing now is um, I'm going to the Web IDE, which is the development platform in the cloud from SAP. I can get into this Web IDE by going to my cloud platform and directly going here in, I have a icon Subweb IDE. I just click it and it brings me directly to my development environment. So we have here several projects already done. What you have to do here is we create a new project first. File, new project from template. We are going to create a multi-target application project from the Cloud Foundry here. Click Next. We give it a name. So this is my suffix for SP3 for all my um, developments here. So this is at all objects repeating. Then we keep the version number. We click this flag and we go to finish. So what we now need first is we need to know uh, what we have here reached. We have now a project which is yet empty. What we need first is we need to know where can we tap a OData service? Where is the destination? And in our ABAP environment in the cloud, we can search for this hook or for this um, API. I'm going to my trial account. It is also in the cloud platform. And in the second video of the series, you have seen how to, well, at least what the result is um, after you did the preparations. So the preparations are in the second video also um, shown at least the, the links where you can have the step-by-step -step introductions or the guidelines. So the goal is that you have here a trial system. And if you go into this system, you have here an API endpoint. And this one we have to collect here, to copy and to keep in mind for our next step. We're going to our project, right mouse click, project settings and put in the project settings and I click here for Cloud Foundry a user endpoint. Make this a little bit larger. And here I put in my endpoint I copied just before and directly it connects and gets some metadata and knows now that the organization is this one and the space belonging to it, I have only one space, is the de development space. And I click Save. That's all the magic. What we are doing now in our next step is now we know where to get the OData services from. Now we take one OData service for our project. We click to right mouse to our project 
new subcloud platform service and we're searching for ABAP. It's now loading. We wait until everything is loaded that you see what what is the result here. So we have a lot of possible um, service destinations to tap services and we click we enter in the search field ABAP. We have our ABAP trial environment. Click next. Now I can select the instance. We use reuse instance and the next thing the service name or the instance it's not the service itself it's the system where the where the service is taken from this is a name which was already used here some in the creation of my ABAP test system and the resource name I take the same name here just to keep it equal and then I click finish Once again, I put here the destination where to get web services from. So the first step was system, now the instance. Next thing is we are creating a HTML5 module for our Fury. Clicking new, HTML5 module. We are doing a list um, report application. So I click this, go to next. We enter name of the module, title. We're giving a namespace, just enter your namespace and the description. Clicking to next. We want to let the HTML module get data out of our web service. Therefore, we are using here this Cloud Platform Service. And now, as we configured it before, it's already available. I can open it. And the uh, metadata of all web services available in this instance is read. Now there's an authentication process in the background starting. It takes a while. Now the answer is coming. Please close this tab and resume your work in Subweb IDE. So it was logging on and getting the metadata. Here the metadata again is actualized. And what is not so nice here is we don't have a kind of search help here to find our our web service. Yeah, I know something with SB3 is in the last three digits and I cannot search with Control F or something like this and I don't have here a, a filter or sort possibility and as this um, ABAP trial environment is used by a lot of developers so we have a lot of entries here and the thing is I have really to search it here manually and this is time consuming I know that I'm here in the last third somewhere that makes it easier for now and here we here set UI C travel MSB3 this is our web service and if I open it we can see what are the uh, entities of this web service you remember it should be the agency and something like uh, our travel process so this could be also enhanced by SAP to make a search or a filter here. Here we have our travel agency, travel processor, which is the main process of our, our application. And what I'm using now is I click this here to mark it. And once it is clicked and it's coming back, I should be able to push next. Yes, here it goes. And the next is, I click here the select metadata and I cannot yet click
click next it is gathering data and after a while I'm getting what I think it's doing it's now taking annotations from the web service because in our web service um, shown in video 2 or um, data service um, there are already the annotations for how the Fiori should look like yeah we have uh, that we have a list layout or we have some buttons or we have a create um, update and delete possibility this also is included here and this is information here we have now a line number two is um, gathered here and now available also for our Fiori or HTML5 module we click to next and here we tell the module where our data is coming from from which entity and we know this is the travel processor well, I think we should be able also to use the help here we just keep the other entries as they are and click to finish and that's our result now we have here a travel app folder So what we are doing now, we are doing a small correction here. In our travel app, we are go going to the empty YAML file, which is um, here. I double click, and we have here in modules. We go to resources. We have to clear the destination here. Just click here put it as a trash bin we save it we would like to see now what we have at the moment for this we can run it on a runtime environment and I think first I configure the runtime create a new one we want to run it as a web application give it a name take a file here we use the sandbox not a mock service which is also interesting because it's just putting some um, random data inside and we're going to run on Cloud Foundry which is our where our ABAP test system is located and the rest, the rest we leave save and run now it's written here that it is starting we have to wait a little bit and now I should be able to see a logon it was now up to a minute to wait but finally there should come a login information and a launch pad that's the expectation here we go I logged on automatically and here I have a travel app which I can click and what we see after the click is from video 2 our testable travel management application so just click here and you see a lot of travels from different travel agency from different customers with different dates and with different prices okay so we don't test it again because we did it also in video 2 for sure you can get in to, to dive in here to edit or to save to delete so the full crud process is possible or to um, create a new uh, create a new one but I don't it's not do this now I'm going back to my web IDE What we also do is now in the step 8 of the tutorial we create a Subfiori Launchpad site module. I'm going to my project Subfiori Launchpad site module. I give it a name Fiori Launchpad LP site module SP3 finish 
So it is creating for me a Fury Launchpad. I want to create now in step nine of the tutorial an uh, inbound tile. So a tile within this Fury Launchpad. Therefore, we have to go to the travel app, to the folder web app, to the manifest JSON. Then the manifest. Now we go to navigation. First semantic object, edit. Now object, and we have, don't have a search help here. We have to give it a name, and we have the action display. That the tile is displayed. Give it a title and we put in a subtitle and we just give it also an icon. I just take here, I'm taking it as person. <laughs> and this is the preview how it should look like appearing in the Fury Launchpad. I save my changes. Now we're coming to step 10 of the tutorial and we create a sub Fury Launchpad site module. We're going to the project, to the portal folder. to the site module, to the portal folder, and here we go to the common data model JSON. We want to add a group that we have later in the Fury Launchpad also a group. I name it travel SP3 group. We know later that's a group. Just for our test, I hit this button, this plus, and I can add now my tile which I created before. Travel booking app title subtitle. Yeah, that's my tile. I select it, and now you can see it's part of my new group. And I save. What we're doing finally is now we need to deploy everything to the ABAP system in the Cloud Foundry. For this, we have to build this project. We have to right mouse click here on our project and clicking build. And here also build. So the build, uh, we have also some warnings, but usually it works also. Um, the build is now creating a tar, mtar file, which is a, let's say, kind of transport pro, um, file, which can then be deployed. Takes a while. Here we can see um, below the status. And in this launchpad editor, we can see the actual messages sent by the system. It tells me now that it's completed and the status is disappeared. And what I have to do now is I have to go to the mtar file to deploy it. This is done here. Close this to make it more um, visible. I go to the MTA archives and here I have my mtar file. I go to the right mouse click here and say deploy to subcloud platform. We enter here the endpoint again, go back to our cloud to our to our portal. Yeah, here we are in the portal again in our SAP ABAP test environment and here I use again my API endpoint, put it in here. The rest is filled automatically by gathering 
metadata. Click deploy and the deployment process will run. Although this takes a while. Last time it took about two minutes. And you can see there's a beautiful error. Um, I was not able to deploy this project and um, it took me really several hours to uh, analyze this error and there was something in the log with a quota what, which what, was not working and I changed this and writing SAP forum mails and inactivating the trial space and reactivating in it also doing playing around with the command line tool, the command line in interface. And by playing around, I also deleted my trial account, which is not so nice and you should not do this at home. Um, so I lost some development, but nevertheless, there's a nice demo data also here. We have this MTA project now, it's called 000, 000 the suffix. And I'm going now to show you that the deployment can also work. So that's it here. I'm going to deploy this. So finally, I have this MTA built, and now I'm going to deploy this. And this time I made an, a Cloud Foundry endpoint in Frankfurt, which is in the EU now and not in US anymore. And the deployment process is triggered and it's starting now. What can we see in the meanwhile in the cloud platform? If we go to the instance, to the trial instance here, we see there's zero applications started now. And you see there's coming something so called app router. This will be the one which is important later where we can get the link to our Fiori Launchpad site and to our app. Amen. Now it's done. So what can we see now in our Fiori trial account? We can see that there are three applications were deployed with this deployment. And we have this app router, we have something like a deployer, and with the Fiori Launchpad site module. I'm going to go now to this app router and this app router keeps a link which is a link which can be used for users to use this application. I just try it here to fill it in. And as you can see we have here now this travel app tile getting in. Okay, that's the proof, it works. It's now another table, you can see that there's data in. This now concludes the last video of this tutorial review from SAP. I hope you enjoyed it and it showed you as developers or as project members what will come to you within the new developing world.